Hey everybody, it's me again and I'm showing myself on YouTube since months because my activity went like Today I want to show you something which is not Doom and is not even Doom related but it's a first person shooter It's called X vs Sever for the Game Boy Advance And this is the big problem already First person shooter on the Game Boy Advance We know there's Duke Nukem and what was the other nine, nine something? And these games suffer either a terrible frame rate, unnecessary pixelated graphics, or terrible controls. But X vs. Server for the Game Boy is actually a very decent and fun game. Unlike the shitty movie. If you have seen the movie and think, whoa, there's a Game Boy game, you have probably false expectations that the game might be as shitty as the movie, but it's not. I think interestingly, uh, the interesting part of this is how they made a 3D first person shooter environment on such a limited hardware. We know this is working well uh, for Doom and Wolfenstein on the PC, but the PC and the Game Boy is like comparing pairs with apples. And it's really worth showing X vs. Eva because it's a great game. BAM Entertainment! BAM BAM BAM! Franchise Pictures and Crawfish Entertainment. X vs. Sever. So let's press start, I guess. The main menu offers us single player, multiplayer and options. By the way, the multiplayer is pretty fun. I played it on different Game Boys with my friends via Link Cable and it's pretty cool. In the options we can turn on and off the music, the crosshair, the sound and adjust the contrast which is useful on the first Game Boy Advance which has no background lighting. The controls are pretty straightforward. The D-pad moves you around, the A button fires the weapon, B button is the spacebar like in Doom, L and R makes you strafe to the left and to the right and holding both buttons down at the same time make you crouch. Start pauses the game and select cycles between the weapons. There's not much to do here. You can't even change it, it's just some sort of information for you. So let's just start a new game, where we can choose between X and Sever. There's no big difference, the missions just slightly differ, but the gameplay is always the same. So let's just go with X. Now the story is being told. All this happens in some sort of Curd room, I guess. And uh, yeah, you basically read what you are going to play through in the mission, in the next mission. The idea of this is, yeah, it's okay. The plot, however, is pretty boring. It's like used 5,000 5, times before and not that great. It's like the broken FBI agent who's seeking revenge. I mean, look at this. Uh, my wife and son got blown up by terrorists. The bomb was mean for me. I tried to bury the pain under other types of pain. It's never enough. I mean, wow. <sighs> nah, whatever. We are not here to read a novel. We are here to play a fucking shooter game. So let's go on. Here we are in the main window. We have all the information we know from shooter games. The health and the armor in the top left, the bullets and the clips for the equipped weapon on the top right. If we are in possession of keycards, they are shown in the bottom right and pickup messages will show on the bottom to the left. The head-up display is very easy to understand and does not take as much space as in other games. The gameplay is very Doom-like. The D-pad moves and turns the player, A fires the weapon and B opens doors and flips switches. Since there's no possibility of aiming up or down, the auto-aim takes over. And that's also the reason why I turned off the crosshair. Because it's just for the looks. We just picked up ZAM armor, which only grants 50 points in X vs. Sever. As far as I know, it protects in a one-third ratio, just like the green armor in the Doom games. As you can see, you cannot run out of bullets for the pistol. In X vs. Sever, the pistol is your fallback weapon, just like the fists or the knife in other games. Especially in the earlier levels, which are supposed to be the tutorial, you won't run out of ammo or health. Later, the game over screen will be seen more often, 
especially if you don't know where the enemies are or if you are not used how to abuse the glitches in this game. <laughs> and as you can hear, there's no music during gameplay. Which is okay, because I turn off the music anyways. I mean, as if X has his iPod on while shooting random people in a warehouse. The only game I play and turn on the music is in Moxie's bar. Okay, jokes aside. You can't walk past enemies until the death animation is fully played. That slows down the entire thing in narrow places. In this scene, you can clearly see that X vs. Seva is not even close to the fast-paced gameplay of the Doom games. The entire gameplay is slower, and the amount of enemies you are facing at the same time is smaller. This does change in the later levels, when entire SWAT teams are heading for you, but still not at the scale of the huge crowds like they are appearing in Doom. That's it with the first mission. There's no need to kill all the enemies on screen. Reaching the goal that is often just the exit is what you are for. The biggest problem I have with this game is the friggin' password system. Not the system itself. More the fact that all the weapons you just received are gone in the next level. The only good thing about that is you're always at full health again. The designers are giving you a good weapon almost immediately in the new level. In this case a Panker Jackhammer, which is the shotgun replacement of this game. But still it sucks. Why can't they let you keep your stuff, as long as you play, before resetting the console? Nope, you lose your equipment no matter what. That's fucking horseshit. The third level starts in an alley where someone accidentally forgot his sniper rifle on top of some boxes. Once we take a few steps ahead, some grenade explodes right in front of us, destroying a hydrant which rather looks like an overflowing beer stein. That moving brown thing over there is our opponent's sever. She literally looks like shit. Uh, I mean with that color and stuff. Not quite like on the box cover. In order to process, we need to hit her a few times. This is the first, but not the last time we meet that bitch. If playing as Sever, the positions are switched and you are trying to blow up X instead from inside the building with grenades. To me, the sniper rifle is not only just the weapon of this game, it's also the cheat gun. Dum dum dum. Why? Because it can fire right through solid obstacles and kill everything behind it. First of all, you need to look where the enemies are located at. Because it is possible to rise across here for some reason, you can overlook the area. Remember the positions of the enemies, move the crosshair as if you would aim at them in plain sight, and then fire. That is such a cheap way to cheat, but makes the game much easier. Yeah, that's the basic gameplay. It's a normal shooter without any big surprises in either the good or the bad way. Nothing where you would go, wow, or uh. The game consists of four different settings. The first one is the warehouse theme, with brick walls and crates all over the place. The next scenes are on the streets or inside vacant buildings. You are also going to pick up more weapons like the Ingram Mac 11 to fight the law enforcement while chasing Zeva through the backyard. Sometimes it's a good idea to explore the map a bit. Some goodies can be found hidden by dumpsters in small alleys. Later, you will broke us to the Viper Launch, a bar with small alcoves, storage rooms and some sort of karaoke stage where you are going to fight Zeva again. This time she has a grenade launcher, but if you are good at dodging, this is not a big deal. Okay, here you can see how the computer fails and keeps shooting at those pile of boxes. Man, those are tough cardboard boxes, aren't they? After that, you will make your way through a hotel where SWAT teams are waiting to ambush you. 
The lights are turned off and everything is barely visible. That's a cool effect and shows the effort that developers put into this. However, on my first generation Game Boy Advance, that stage was a pain in the ass because of the non-existent background lighting and the very poor contrast. After killing certain SWAT members, you can pick up their infrared goggles. Yet another nice effect. I just wonder why the player does not produce any heat. Just look at the hand, it's blue as if the player is stone cold. During the game's process, the enemies will be tougher because the law enforcement apparently figured out they will need more than a few rent a cops in blue shirts to stop you. I hate the trial and error part of this game. If you die, you have to start the stage all over again. That's annoying and some checkpoint system would be handy here. If I fast forward the gameplay a bit, you can see how linear and easy it is in terms of crowds. Because there are no bigger crowds, you can take out the enemies one by one. The last stages are in the lion's den, the NSA headquarters. No easy security guards anymore. These guys here are serious. Dead serious, literally. And without any body armor, it takes about three hits to see the game over screen. The weaponry also shifted from the light handguns in the first levels, mainly to the G11, the grenade launcher, mines, and the old-fashioned M76 hand grenade. Speaking of weapons, the game features a wide range of Let's call it real life guns. This is the big plus of this game. No fantasy or cipher weapons. Only well known manufacturers like Colt and Heckler and Koch are featured. With this being said, I will end this review now. If you have some emulator on your portable devices and you are looking for good games, this is surely a good time waster. If we have no problem with the few glitches like this AI which is stuck and keeps shooting the chair or the try and error going on, this is my recommendation for you. Thanks for watching.